Uh, hello, this is just a short GeoGebra screencast of a uh, demonstration of the properties of the intersection of two surfaces, this being a hemisphere and half of a cylinder. This is relevant for the slicing of the hemisphere into loons, as is clear from the other video. So we're interested in analysing the properties of this orange curve. Right, so you can see it doesn't seem to be a regular planar curve or anything else. So let's in, let's introduce a point on the curve so that we can think about it. So we've got this point P, an arbitrary point on the curve. And what we're going to do is draw some of the radii of the, um, of the sphere or the hemisphere. So I've marked those in. I've also marked the semicircle on the horizontal plane. And one of the, of course, important properties is the distance from C to P is the radius of the sphere, no matter where P is. Uh, let's just get rid of the surfaces so that we can see what's going on. And the important thing we're going to do is drop down from P to the point A, which is just the point on the horizontal plane directly below P. So from that, we get some right angles for free. So PAC and PAB are both right angles because we're projecting down. Now you might also have figured that there's another right angle going on here and that is the right angle we get from the angle in a semicircle. So the, an angle uh, in a semicircle is always a right angle. So we've got three right angles going on there. So at the point A we've sort of got a nice, really nice corner going on which is going to help us. What we're really interested in are the, these triangles that are formed in this little tetrahedron. In particular, these two triangles, they end up being congruent. And it's not too hard to see why. One of the things, they've got their hypotenuse, they're both equal to the radius, so they're equal. They've also got a side, AC, equal. They've got that in common. And they've got a right angle. So using the right angle hypotenuse side rule, these two triangles are congruent. Now, of course, from that, we want to make a deduction about some lengths. And these two lengths, AP and AB, you can see numerically they're equal, no matter where P is. But we're not interested in the numerical result. We're interested in, in fact, the fact that these are equal always. So uh, AP is equal to some length L, AB is equal to the same length L. Now, what that means is when we translate it to this triangle here, we've got a right angle height, um, a right angled isosceles triangle there. ABP has a right angle at A, has a 45 degree angle at B, and, and that's due to the fact that we've got an isosceles triangle. So pretty basic geometric facts here. The important thing to notice is that's true no matter where P is. Now you have probably can see where this is going. We can form a cone where the apex is at B and we go up at 45 degrees. So let's put that in. This cone here, because of the way this triangle works, point P is always on that cone where we've got the angle on the cone is 45 degrees and as I said the apex is pointing down at, at B. Now this means that that curve is totally contained within the surface of that cone, which is brilliant. What we can do is go back to looking at the original uh, curve and you can see I've got the sphere there and it lies completely within the surface. Um, the curve lies completely within the surface of that cone and if I also put the cylinder in you can see that these three surfaces, any two of them intersect in that curve, that curve that we started off looking at. Now this is relevant for the um, the way the loons move around in the other animation in the sense that the when we rearrange the loons we actually form an anti-cone that was the result we wanted and that's what's required this little demonstration is what's required to demonstrate that so that's actually really cool, quite nice we could have done it using coordinate geometry but we've done it purely using three-dimensional Euclidean geometry so that's where I'll finish this